With the Halo Infinite operation, the Yappening finally released, it's time to crack out the most powerful weapon in all of Halo. Look, I'm all for capitalism, but there's a major problem here. Ever since we've been jumping into operations instead of seasonal updates, 3 for 3 has been in a perpetual state of inconsistency. They would have great updates giving us maps, modes, then turn around and give us a store update like they're running out of business. It's almost like they're taking a step forward and then just launching themselves headfirst straight into a wall. And whether this is a decision mainly by Microsoft or maybe chosen by 3 for 3, I think we all can agree that there are some flaws here. Now, I'm a level-headed guy. I'm a big Halo fan, obviously. Can I see the light at the end of the tunnel? Is there good aspects of this update that can redeem the yapping event? Is the bad greatly outweigh the good? Let's break out our credit cards, sing our praises to Yip Yap, and jump right into this. So with how mixed the reception of this operation is, I feel like I need to first talk about the bad. One of the biggest reasons most Halo fans are crapping their pants since the start of the operation is mainly due to the shop. And I know that since day one, all we've heard about Chrome 3 for 3 devs including Jerry Hook, is your store will only get better, or you will earn money in the game by just playing it. Well, not only did we lose the ability to earn money in the game, but the store is actually just getting worse. So that was a f***ing lie. Store prices are equaling the levels of indie games. They are purposely selecting the best and most interesting armors and locking them behind a paywall. Oh, that's real nice. I mean, that's such a smart business strategy, guys. Show off some really cool armor that people really want to have, and then just force them to pay with hard-earned cash. Bundles range from $18 to $38, and it's even getting to the level where two crappy items can equal DLC from games back in the day. I mean, I heard the rumors that Microsoft needs to see Halo Infinite earn money, or else they might just pull the plug on the game entirely, but still, this is just sad. I mean, 3 for 3, if you're the ones behind making these prices so high, then you should just be ashamed of yourself. I mean, I never imagined Halo would become just like every other greedy-ass game with battle passes and shop items like we're playing Fortnite, but this is just sad. Remember the old days when Halo 5 had introduced a loot box system and everyone was losing their minds? I do remember my vitriol when I had to unlock a thousand packs just to unlock all the armors because of this bullshit luck system not based on merit, like I was playing slots. Come on, baby, come on, give me, give me, give me, give me the North Fang. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, come on, you bitch. But at least Halo 5 had ways to earn credits by just playing the game. So back then, they just made it an incentive to play and grind to earn the ability to open up loot boxes. Sure, you can go on a buying spree and just buy hundreds and hundreds of packs, but you technically never had to. Hell, they even had combinations that they give you a little extra bonus credits by just doing challenges. Halo Infinite, on the other hand, is, uh, Accommodations? I mean, what the hell is that? What do I look like, a guy who's not lazy? I mean, I love it when people actually have the gall to say that Jerry Hook was fighting for the fans and he was fired for it. Are you uh, are you out of your mind? Guys, Jerry Hook is a fraud. He created the system that we have in the first place. And his job was to make Microsoft money, which means create this, this cheap ass system that we have today. And he, yeah, left because he got fired. And when he was officially gone, all I can think was, good riddance. Because at that point, I thought, hey, maybe things could change. But I've been saying this for nearly every Halo season and Operation video. The store is trash. It's always been trash. And most likely will stay as trash. I'm the trash man. If they actually let us buy individual products or maybe earn money by playing the game, or just complete challenges, we actually would have a completely different outlook of the game. But you know, 3 for 3, common sense doesn't really work. Now, for every update we have gotten ever since we switched operations has roughly given us a collection of maps or at least a refresh of playlists that we can jump into and just get back into the game and enjoy a new experience. 3 for 3 announced that we're getting a new map, Corrosion, which has a pretty cool premise, being a UNSC base as refining minerals, which results in basically a whole entire poisonous resources to be spread all over the map. So uh, what is this bad boy dropping? Later. I mean, for God's sakes, it's a forge map. We need stuff to do. Is there like 10 people working on Halo Infinite at this point? I mean, I want to come off as a standard mega negative Halo fan because I'll be honest, most of us are at this point. We need to see better here. Maps and Forge have been created by the community on a daily basis. We shouldn't be having issues with implementing maps into this game. I feel like this ties directly to our next point. It feels like 3 for 3 is a straight up ghost town. Getting major updates feels like we'll never actually get things that will change the game. I mean, remember back in the day when they said, oh yeah, VIP is nearly here. 
All those rumors that their seasons all the way through season eight are ready to roll and they will be released for the game with all new equipments. What is it? That stench. I've smelled it before. So it's either leakers like Serasia have no idea what's dropping, or 3 for 3 decided to nearly drop all of the work that they've been working on and just straight up threw in the trash. Because they don't have enough people focusing on Halo Infinite anymore, and they're all prioritizing Halo 7. Now I get it, Halo 7 in the horizon, and they want to really make sure the next game is as good as possible on the Unreal Engine. I understand that. I, I don't disagree with that decision but at the same time we still need people working on this game so we can continue making it a transition title so people can actually trust 3 for 3 going forward i'm not expecting this game to be a 10-year experience like they originally promised which is a complete joke but we still can continue adding content to the game three to four years after its initial release or at least think of it as a means to get us to keep playing halo until the next game arrives. Even Halo 5's garbage ass had updates that provided weapons and maps. This game is better than that and we all know it. And to make matters worse, my warnings about easy cheat are about to come to fruition. Now me personally, I've not experienced a lot of cheaters to this point, but I've seen some pretty horrendous clips online which make me want to puke. Bandit rifles going fully automatic, cheaters using instant transmission technique to ninjas random ass players. I'm legit shocked to see some of the stuff I'm seeing. Some people are saying to either update the easy easy anti-cheat or to just go back to the original system so it's easy to crack down on these types of cheaters. It seems like 3 for 3 is doing the COD method and banning a crap ton of players all at once so they are taken by surprise. But the problem is is that if you do that it means that all the players that are experiencing cheating on a pretty daily basis are going to be quite annoyed and it will just take longer in the process. They should be banished to the shadow realm for cheating. And I'm also going to be brunt here but you have to be the biggest pussy on the planet to actually cheat in a social BTB game in Halo Infinite. And when I see dudes doing this in a rank lobby, I think the punishment should be that you have to watch the Halo show sex scene on repeat until your brain just explodes. Now, even though I just dropped the meanest fart on the update, I do need to look at the positive side here. I gotta say the armor additions in both the shop and the free pass is pretty awesome. What you say is heresy. I get it, I hate having to buy cool armor, but these armor sets are the most unique that we've seen in this game to this point. I think at least since the URI bundles were dropped, and I wanted my dude to look like a samurai since day one. I mean, who doesn't want their Spartan to look like a grunt? I'm sure 3 for 3 is making straight up bank for putting these armors behind a paywall, but even the free pass has some really cool stuff. What this tells me is that you could literally do this for every banished alien, and people would love it. Why can't we get an elite or brute armor set next? I know it's too much to ask to get playable elites, but maybe we can get armor dedicated to multiple elite classes from the campaign. Paint. I can only imagine 3 for 3 raising these prices. And if you buy today, only $69.99 can you buy the Armor Bundle. All jokes aside, the armor is exactly the type of stuff you want to see in a live service game for Halo. Make things unique. You don't have to tell a story with these armors. Just make them fun, make them interesting, and just make them kind of something that people want to see in Halo. I think that should be the goal from now on. Make armors fun and enjoyable. Make people say, hey, that's that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll jump back into the game and unlock that. We saw this with the MCC armor sets later in its life cycle. And my expectation is that we get the same thing for Infinite since there is so much room to work with this type of customization. Lastly, the Grumpocalypse game mode is extremely fun to play. I mean, I played several rounds and not once did I feel like this can get old. The Firefight variant having only grunts be your opponents is funny as hell. But what's crazy is that it's not like it's incredibly easy either. Mainly since they add a whole bunch of skulls per round, each time just feels like you're playing a different type of game. And I feel like I can always jump into a game and get a different experience each time. I really would like to see new firefight maps added to the rotation to spice things up a little bit, but maybe I'm just asking too much here. I do hope that the mode does stay as a variant of firefight so we can continue to enjoy it as we get past this operation because people have had a solid experience so far and I think it's a great way to play. Overall, the operation gave me both heartburn and a sense of enjoyment. The store still grinds my ass with how bad the overall prices are with the lack of actually being able to buy individual items. I mean, we've been asking this since day one, meaning I have to buy a near $20 bundle if I just want one item in it, and it's completely frustrating. But the armors look so damn good and fun. Being a grunt is just so fun, especially since we never got to have this experience really in any Halo game up to this point. 3 for 3 seems like they're truly emphasizing their resources to the next game and because of that, a lot of their devs are leaving Infinite to the side, which is causing a slow drip of content to be releasing. You can tell this because of the fact that we still haven't had any new weapons or vehicles added to this game. When Halo 5 had more updates to weapons by this point, you know, 
You fucked it up. But there are some bright spots. The game is fun, gameplay is great, and with my experience not really running into much cheaters, I feel like I've been able to enjoy the new game modes, and hopefully a map later on. My only wish is that 3 for the realizes that this game would get much needed love if they did some fan service and gave us an ability to earn credits so we can experience buying these products at a real discount rather than having to use my credit card to actually feel like I'm unlocking armor. Until next time, buddy. We're ready to roll. But do you like the happening event? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Hit the join button below to officially join the crew. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.